Hey everybody, those of you who watch my channel know about a month and a half, two months ago, I did a video called Microsoft Can Kiss My You Know What. Well, guess what everybody? Microsoft is back at it and you've probably heard about it, but if you haven't, that's what we're covering today on eBuzz Central. Before we get started with today's video, I want to remind everybody, whether you're a patron of my channel or not, zip on over to my Patreon page, scroll down until you get to the 10,000 subscriber video that I have posted here. Everybody can watch it. I want you to take a look at it. I have to put it on Patreon because there are certain rules on YouTube that I can't break. And let's just say this rhymes with schmiv away. But anyway, zip on over there, take a look at that video. There's a lot of good information in it. Also, if you haven't had a chance to get on over to the eBuzz Central store, please do. We've got everything from Linux Mint to Arch. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, mugs, you name it, it's over there. And if there's something that's not on there that you would like to see, drop it in the comments below and we'll do our darndest to get it up there for you. So now let's go ahead and get to that video. Now what I want to do real quick is I want to go ahead and open up my browser here. And let's go ahead and maximize it. Actually what I want to do is go over some things real quick. UEFI. You guys are probably really familiar with it. We didn't used to have to deal with it, but now we do. Used to give us a little bit of a problem when we wanted to install Linux, but it doesn't anymore. I know everybody out there is going to say this is not a major thing, but, you know, it's just another way that things have changed on computers. And basically what EFI's practices and data formats do is mirror those of Microsoft Windows. If you don't believe me, go look it up. So let's go on ahead and move to what is TPM. The Trusted Platform Module. It's used by services like BitLocker and Windows Hello. It was just a, another way of kind of putting something into your hardware to make you, you know, rely on Microsoft to have your encryption keys and, and pretty much control things on your system when you should really have control of those yourself. But as commenters have said in my previous videos, hey, most people don't know what to do with that stuff anyway. It's okay to trust it with Microsoft. So let's go on another one here, guys. Let's meet Microsoft Pluton. Has anybody heard about this? And if you have, please drop your comments below and let me know what you think about Microsoft Pluton. Now, the role of the Windows PC and trust in technology are more important than ever as our device keeps us connected and productive across work and life. What this is, guys, it's going to be integrated. Listen to this. It's going to be completely integrated into the chips. In upcoming Intel, Qualcomm, and AMD processors, there's going to be a new chip built into the CPU silicon die. And it's co-developed by Microsoft and AMD, and it's called Pluton. Now, I'm not going to read you what they got over here on Microsoft to let you know how Microsoft is going to sugarcoat this thing. But I'm going to go over some quick things here real quick and just kind of update you on what the Pluton processor is and what does it mean for us in the BSD and Linux community. This new chip was announced way back in 2020. However, details of what it was actually capable of and what it actually means for the Windows ecosystem were kept very vague. Now with Pluton rolling out in some AMD chips, it's possible for us to kind of put together this information now. So what is inside Pluton? Well, let's go ahead and do this, and I'm going to break it down and try to explain it to where you can understand it. It's going to have the full TPM 2.0 implementation. It's going to have SHAC, which is Secure Hardware Cryptography Key implementation. It's going to have DICE, which is your Device Identifier Composition Engine. And it's going to have the robust Internet of Things, which is the RIOT. Not the IoT, but the RIOT. Specification Compliance. Now, this specification was developed by Microsoft and was announced almost seven years ago. It was way back in 2016. However, beside these functions, Pluton implements the full breadth of security improvements that Microsoft used to only have on Windows 10 secured core PC systems. If you're not sure what those systems are, zip on over and take a look at it. But some of the things that it entails is dynamic root of trust for measurement, or the DRTM, system management mode, which whether you can edit your device guard, regular computers have long had the SMM, but 
it's still going to be implemented right into it. Memory access protection, kernel DMA protection, and hypervisor code integrity. So basically what I gave you there was a lot of acronyms. But what does it mean really in the big picture of things? In a nutshell, Microsoft believes they need to exercise more control over PC security than they previously have. This came up with Windows 11, which infamously, if you all know out there, required 8th gen or newer CPUs, TPM 2.0, and secure boot capability. Those of us knowing the Linux community, you can download Rufus, get rid of all of those requirements, and keep going, but who really wants to install Windows anymore? However, while Microsoft was terrible at defining why certain CPUs made the cut and others didn't, a lot like the Zen 1, if you look back on that, that didn't make any sense. And also Windows 11 used Virtualization Based Security, or VBS, to isolate parts of system memory from the rest of the system. VPS includes an optional feature called Memory Integrity. That's the more user-friendly name for calling Hypervisor Protection Code Integrity, or HVCI. HVCI can be enabled on Windows 10's PCs that don't have driver incompatibility issues, but older computers will incur a significant performance penalty because their processors don't support mode-based execution control. Now, I know you're probably sitting there going, what does this really mean for me? Well, with all the acronyms that I've thrown at you, Microsoft originally developed Pluton for the Xbox, but also for the Azure Sphere. When they developed the Azure Sphere chip for secure Internet of Things devices, they designed it to be compliant with seven properties of highly secure devices, which is your hardware-based root of trust, small trust computing base, defense in depth, compartmentalization, certificate-based authentication, renewable security, and failure reporting. Basically, they wanted to take all control of your system. If you don't believe me, think about it like this. If I've got a computer and I install Windows on it, and I'm using Windows, and I'm there with my hardware, why does Microsoft want so much control of not just my software, but now they want control of my hardware? So, I know you guys are saying, what does this have to do with Linux? What does this have to do with me as a Linux user or a BSD user? So we put all of this together. What are the effects on me when Pluton arrives? Pay attention to what I'm saying here, people. You will no longer be able to install Linux with Pluton enabled unless the Microsoft third-party UEFI certificate is enabled in your UEFI firmware. I'm going to repeat that. You will no longer be able to install Linux with Pluton enabled unless the Microsoft third-party UEFI certificate is enabled in your UFEI firmware. Pluton will integrate with Windows Update for system firmware, potentially allowing for some forms of drivers to be updated, as well as potentially having downgrade prevention, which means if it breaks your system and you want to downgrade it, you're SOL. You're out of luck. You can't do anything about it. So basically, guys, what I'm telling you as a Linux user or a BSD user, at the end of the day, I would avoid buying any hardware that come with the Pluton built into it. Just my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have more information on what you believe the Pluton processor might be used for in Microsoft's little world, please let me know that also in the comments below. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on YouTube, going over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel, buying us a coffee, or zipping on over to PayPal and throwing us a donation. And I want to take a little time right now to thank the people that make this channel possible, and that's all of my supporters, my YouTube members, and my patrons. Executive producer, Mislo Krileja. Producer, Mitchell Valentino. VIP sponsors are Eugene Lee, Brian Mitchell, Antoine Wilk. All access sponsors, Mike DePolis and PJ. Sponsors, Cato Gosted, Nitrix Development Team, Chad Jones, David Collins, Marco Lopez, Steve Willard, Eric Crowell, Joel Salerzano, Warlock, Sivius, Art Edwards, Marmaduke, Keith Hefner, and Stein Sailor Odland. 
Thank you guys, you're the reason this channel exists. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, here are a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source, but sometimes I do do a little Windows bashing and maybe a little Google bashing as well. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.